do you feel like things really began to click for you this season? Uh, probably when I got the gist of the offense. Once I got comfortable in the offense and could play faster, that's when things started clicking. So when was that? Um, I mean, this whole season has been a, a blur, really. I, mean, I couldn't pinpoint when. Probably San Jose State game that week or the week after. How? What were the biggest struggles with um, you know, learning this offense? Um, probably just learning the offense in general, uh, terminology down, and then after understanding the terminology, is knowing where to put your eyes. At the, at the snap of the ball. Um, I've gotten pretty good at that now. Uh, I feel really comfortable and I can play faster and get the ball out of my hands a little bit quicker now. Um, that and chemistry with the receivers. Uh, me not being here in the spring and then having to sit out the first little bit of uh, camp because I was sick uh, really hurt me with the chemistry part. And now this deep in the season, I feel like we got uh, really good chemistry with, with Allen and and Dre and Shante and I'm pretty happy where we're at right now. Was I'm, there an adjustment period too for <laughs> just the whole quarterback rotation thing too? Because you know, I gotta imagine you've never done that before too. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, that just is what it is. Yeah. You know, I, that's how coach wanted to do it, and that's how we had to do it at the beginning to figure things out. I think we kind of got a rhythm in that now too. So. How much time would you spend in the Berg and stuff as you were kind of studying? I know you've talked about watching film and record too. How much, what were your habits like, I guess, as you were trying to pick up the offense? Um, at the beginning, my habits weren't, weren't elite. Um, now, I mean, I'm in here some mornings, majority of the mornings when I don't have class and I'm not lifting weights. I'm up here at six o'clock in the offensive staff team in the meeting room. And, watching film with the coaches and while they're putting in the game plan and kind of uh, watch, seeing how they watch film and, and what they look for and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it's really helped me in my process. That and Coach Campbell, if I'm not up here, my phone's ringing asking me where I'm at. So <laughs> him in my ear is a, is a big help. Um, that and the, the, the coaches, Coach Hoff, I can't compliment Coach Hoff enough for the, the, the teacher he is and the coach he is. And, how motivating he is. Were there you any light bulb moments for you as you were watching film, or was it more gradual? Or, or can you pinpoint specific instances where you're like, oh, you know, like I've cleared a hurdle, and you know, that's you're just furthering? Yeah, that's probably. I mean, those light bulbs really go off in practice. You know, when you you throw a go route on time across the middle, and you're like, okay, that's how we're supposed to get it done. And then the next six times you do it, you do it just like that. So, I mean. It, Light bulbs is definitely in practice, not watching film. Um, but the, watching film is more for seeing what the other team is doing and being able to see it on film and then going to practice and being able to see it happening in practice. That's why we watch film so much. And that's I didn't know that's why we watch practice in the beginnings or watch film in the beginning. And Coach Hoff's kind of made that clear for me and Coach Han Campbell. And, watching film and coach off's like okay this is what you need to look for for this coverage and this is what you need to look for for this coverage and it's really now i, I see it all you said it wasn't elite your preparation wasn't elite early on what do you mean by that and what caused you to change those habits and become elite i didn't spend as much time as i needed to be up here with the coaches i mean i'd be up here watching film by myself but there's a big difference between watching film by yourself and watching film with the coaches um, when you watch film together, everybody's on the same page. When you watch film, it's in separate places. And, you know, some people might see this. Other people might see something different. And when you get on the field, it, it shows. But when you're in the same room as your offensive coordinator and your head coach, when we get into games, it's, it's almost like second nature. They call a play. I kind of know what's coming next. Or I'll get a formation, and I'll know the rest of the play just by, by listening to what they're saying. So. What caused you to change that mindset and try to become elite and start doing that stuff? Um, well, I mean, motivation from myself, first <laughs> off. And Coach Campbell really wanted me to get in there and learn the offense and, and contribute to the team really helps. And, you know, you get pressure from your teammates 
keeping you accountable and things like that. So, so as far as individual expectations, how how have they matched up or what do they look like from maybe what you thought at the beginning of the year to where you are now and the kinds of numbers maybe you've been putting up the last few games? You're saying what's my yeah, expectations? Yeah, what were your myself? expectations maybe at the beginning and uh, oh, have I mean, they matched my, up to My where expectations they are, now? are always higher than anybody's. I mean, the thought process I had coming in this year was I was going to be a Heisman candidate. So, <laughs> and, and I still hold myself to that. I, I want to be the best of the best. And that's just simple fact. So and what it was like then coming in, seeing Joel kind of the top, and you having to adjust, and knowing that you had these expectations for yourself, but there was another guy there. I mean, it's it's just a it's adversity for yourself, and I mean, my my life's been full of adversity, but I, I kind of knew ahead of time coming in, and Joel's been here, he was here in the spring, and it's going to be a process getting working to the top. So, I mean, I just took it one day at a time, and I knew what I was getting myself into, and it, it kind of sucked being out. Um, you get into camp because that hurt me even more, but I stuck with it and was patient and let things happen. What was the conversation like for, you know, was did coaches tell you up front, like, hey, we're going to, you and Jill are going to split time, or how did that kind of conversation I mean, happen? It just went week by week mm -hmm. between performances and practice and, and what the coaches was comfortable with. Mm -hmm. To feel like it's all kind of come together now, I know the learning, there was that learning curve, the opportunity, and now, Definitely. you know, Definitely. I, I feel like um, even it's showing in our offense and in our team in general is the coaches coming in and it being a whole completely different system. Uh, what about it for you individually? And, Has it, you feel like it's kind of all come together now? Yeah. I think that shows in, in my play. Well, you, you talked about when the rotation started how much you have Joel's back and how much he has yours. Is that? Deepened as roles have been defined more clearly. For sure, for sure. I mean, I I tell Joe that every time he walks on the field. It's the last thing I say to him. I got your back, man. Don't worry about it. Just go out there and play. He does the same for me. He said when he was scoring his rushing touchdown slowly on the sideline, guys were telling him to be a little bit more demonstrative. Were you one of those guys like celebrate a little bit more? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Coach Hall used to tell us, uh, Joel, you don't have enough fun, and Jacob, you have too much fun. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I try to get excited for Joel just because I Joel, I don't think Joel gets excited for himself enough, but I think he's growing into it now, and I think it shows in his plays. He's more confident. And I think I was, I'm more confident in him than he is running the football. I mean, anytime Joel's out there, I'm thinking touchdown. How unique it is, because you mentioned that you know you had these expectations. You want to be a Heisman candidate. And, you know he's mentioned that you know part of you always wants to be the guy. You know the competitor, and you wants to be the guy. How unique is that you two have been able to balance and support each other so much in a two quarterback system? Yeah, I mean it, it don't happen every day, so I guess you could call it unique. But um, I'm not a selfish guy by any means, and I mean I never put myself ahead of anybody. So I mean when it comes to a team, I, I feel like I'm one of the, the better teammates on the team. So. I just take it up for what it is. I don't got nothing against Joel, and Joel don't got nothing against me. And it, at the end of the day, it's neither one of our decisions. So whatever happens, I can't hold it against him. And it's just, it's not rational. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. And you mentioned after the game that you hope there's a time when people won't be surprised by 66 to 10 wins. And you said, you know, that's not where I come from. Yeah. What, did, what did you kind of mean by that? I mean, I come from a place where we win, and losing is not acceptable. I think around here, it was kind of, People were just accepting the fact that we were losing, and if we were in the game, it's cool. But I mean, I, I don't want that anymore. I'm not okay with it. I don't like losing, and I'm not gonna ever accept losing. So um, if you come in, you accepting losing, and you're in the wrong place, because Coach Campbell, I can tell you, sure, definitely doesn't accept losing. Mm -hmm. Were guys surprised after that 66-10 win, or were you guys confident in that locker room, like, yo, we could, we knew we could do something like this? After the, the 60, yeah, as a team. Yeah, I mean, that, this is what we knew should have been happening all year. I mean, it just happened that these last couple of games is when it started clicking. I mean, we've been practicing like this and performing and coming out here, and we just fall short in preparation and things like that. But, I mean, all week we've had good practices. I mean, the last really month we've had ridiculous practices, and our execution has come to – where, I mean, 90% of our starters are, are getting A's in their, in their grades and everything's coming together. Cool. All right, Jacob. Thanks, thanks, thanks Jacob.